Hey there Dev Squad, Virtus here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine 4 Mech Combat tutorial series. Within today's video we're going to be setting up the different damage types for our special attacks. So in the last few videos we've been working on the special attacks, so if you press number 1 on your keyboard you have got your whirlwind ability, press number 2 it's going to do your helicopter ability and if you do number 3 it is going to do your leap ability. However, at the moment, they are currently not doing any damage to the AI, and that's what we're going to be setting up in today's video. So we're going to be differentiating between the different uh, damage types, and then making sure that it takes away a different amount of health from the AI, depending on the type of attack that you're doing. So let's go ahead and dive right in and get started. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is open up our third person character. Within here, what we're going to do to simplify things is have a damage type. And our damage type is going to be 0 for our default attack, 1 for our whirlwind attack, 2 for our helicopter attack, and 3 for our leap attack. So under your variables, in the bottom left hand corner, create a new variable. We're going to give this the name damage type. And then with this variable type, we're going to be setting this to an integer value so that we can have a numerical value because we're just going from 0 to 3. Go ahead and hit compile and from there we can start working with this. So the default damage type that we're going to have is 4. 4 is going to do absolutely no damage and as such, when you hit the AI with a damage type 4, it's not going to do anything. So what we need to do now is when they're doing the whirlwind attack, the helicopter attack and the leap attack, we need to set the damage type to its correct value. So what I'm going to do is start off with our default attack. And over here, what you can see we're doing is we're toggling these values for is attacking to true. When I'm doing that, just before my delay, I'm going to set my damage type equal to zero. And then with this, afterwards, I'm going to be setting my damage type once it's finished attacking back to 4. 4 is going to do absolutely nothing, so damage type within there should be 4. So it goes from 0 to 4. 0 is going to be when it's doing its attack, 4 is when it should be doing nothing. So that's all good for our default attack. Also, if you haven't already got a comment box around your default attack, go ahead and select everything and press C to do that and just give it the name default attack. And now, as you can see, if we zoom out, we can easily find our default attack. So with that done, navigate to your whirlwind attack. And after we've set whirlwind active, all we're going to be doing, as you can probably guess, is set our damage type to 1. 1 is going to be for our whirlwind. And once it's finished, on release, what we're going to be doing with this is simply setting it to 4, with 4 once again being our damage type that is not going to work. So that's all good. Do the same thing for our helicopter attack. So set damage type at the end of our code set the damage type for this one to 2. I'll make sure it is, so we, we should have is default attack at, one, at 0, whirlwind attack at 1, helicopter attack at 2. And then on release, as you can see here, we are going to be setting this to 4. So set your damage type to 4. And then we're good to go. And last one that we've got here is our leap attack. Now with this, we need to do it just before it jumps in the air. So just before the impulses and then after the delay, we need to set it. So what I'm going to do is make my comment box for all of this leap attack a little bit bigger to give me some more room. And I'm also going to resize the comment box for my other attacks if I need to. But with your impulse and your forces and everything after that, move it along a little bit and just after you set leap active to true and already attacking to true this is where you want to set your damage type to free 
And then after that, at the end, at the very end of your code, this is where you want to set your damage type back to 4. 4, once again, being our null damage type. So there we are, we are good to go. So we can now tell the engine what type of damage we should be doing. What we now need to do is go into our AI and depending on the type of integer, the type of damage that's meant to be applied, we need to deal different damage. So open up our test dummy underscore master. And inside of here, what we're gonna be doing is using very similar functionality to what we've got here for our default attack. We are going to be deleting all of this code and rewriting it. Now, don't worry, it wasn't a waste as this is going to definitely help you figure out how you're going to be adding in this damage functionality. So delete all of it apart from cast to hammer. So once we've cast to the hammer, what we're going to need to do is after they've hit this AI, we need to find out what type of damage they've hit it with. And the only way we're going to be able to do this is if we have that damage type variable. To access that, we need to go to cast to our third person character. And then with the object world card, you want to get the player character. And then as the third person character, you want to get the damage type. And then what we can do with this then is if we drag out from the execution pin from cast to third person character, we are going to be using the switch on integer node. And what this is going to allow us to do is grab a selection, which is going to be our damage type, and then set various results depending on the value of it. So you could see there, I just added pins going from zero, one, two, and three. If you want to add more pins, just add this little thing there. And then you've also got your default, but we're going to be leaving this blank. So what we're going to be doing now with this is we now need to take away from the health value depending on the type of damage. So if you remember by default, the AI has got one health. This is 100%. What I'm going to be doing is with the default attack, we are going to be doing one amount of damage. With the whirlwind, it's going to be less. With the helicopter attack, it's going to be a little bit more. Um, but you guys are entirely up to change this value if you want to. So what I'm going to do is from one, we are going to set our health. And this health is simply going to be float minus float. So the first float going into A should be our health. And then B is the amount of health that you want to take away with your default attack. So that's all good. So that is our default attack right there. What I'm going to do is select this and press C to comment it. And we're going to give this the name default attack. So with this default attack, we are going to take away 0.3 health. Moving on, we're then going to do our whirlwind. So once again, we are going to do set health. And with this, all we're doing is just taking away health from it. So float minus float, we are going to get the health value. And because the whirlwind's going to spin around really quick, it's going to get more hits. We are only going to make it take away 0.2 health. And that is our whirlwind damage. So what we're going to do with this is give it the name whirlwind, whirlwind attack. And that's all good. Move it along just like that. Give yourself a bit of space to work with. Moving on from there, we've then got our helicopter attack. And once again, we're just doing set health. And then with that set health, float minus float. Get your default value for your health or the current value for health rather. And then with this, what we're going to do with this, it's going to be a little bit more powerful. We are going to take away 0.3 health. Select it all, comment it, give it the name helicopter attack and chuck it there. And then for the last one, for the third pin that we've got here, all we're doing one more time is set health. And then with set health, float 
minus float. And then with this, once again, A is going to go into your health. And then B is going to be the amount of damage you want to take away. I want my leap abilities to be quite strong, so I'm going to take away 50% of the health. What I'm going to do then is then simply comment it, and this is going to be our leap attack. So you can see here now, we are quite easily to, able to break down our different damage types. And this is just because we're powering it by the switch integer node and a damage type variable. What you might want to do then, from there, is do a impact effect, so a particle system, to tell the player that they've hit that AI. So what I'm going to do is simply spawn emitter at location. And this is going to go straight in to each and every single one of our attacks. Just like that. And then our location is going to be get world location for our mesh. So this is for our AI. For the emitter templates, you should have P underscore explosion. You want to put that in there and then we are good. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and compile this and make sure it's got no errors. So at the moment, you can see that get world location is throwing us an error. That's because there's nothing hooked up into it. It's set to self, but that doesn't always work. So what you want to do is get a reference to the mesh and then hook that up into your get world location. So it's going to spawn that particle system on the mesh. Close this up, press play, and then if we run up to it normally, it's gonna do nothing. However, if I go ahead and start spinning, it is going to do that explosion. Same goes for my other attack, and lastly for my, and lastly for my leap as well. Now notice, this character is not dying at the moment, and that is why at the very end here we need to run our check to see whether or not the health for this AI has gone below zero. If it has, destroy the actor. So after we spawn this emitter, run a branch node. With this, we're just going to do float less than or equal to, and with that, if it is set to zero, if it's below zero, our health that is, then what we're going to be doing is simply, if it's true, we are going to destroy the actor. If we go ahead and hit compile, hit play, we can now start destroying it. So if I press one, go up to it, after a couple of hits, it's going to destroy itself. And if you have a stronger ability, like your leap, then it is going to destroy it quicker. But you have to be a bit more careful with the leap. It's harder to hit. Um, and that is why I've got it dealing more damage. So hopefully, guys, you guys have got your damage type set up. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Once again, guys, thanks for watching. Stay awesome, keep creating. Your boy Vertus, signing out. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.